If you feel like you are being torn in a million different pieces every single day, either through Slack or WhatsApp or Instagram or wherever you're getting pinged and dinged, you may want to just listen for the next five to 10 minutes and shift a couple key things that are going to give you your mental space back. Communication apps like Slack and Microsoft Teams have just become this crutch that could be crushing your productivity and your business. Constant pings and interruptions. It's also easy to start relying on Slack for every little thing, you know, asking questions that you can easily find the answers to yourself, which ends up disrupting somebody else's work. And before you know it, your attention is fractured all over the place and you're not able to work inside of your genius zone. And your genius zone is that place you go when you're doing the things that you are the best in the world at doing. But in order to get into that zone, in order to get into that flow, you gotta focus without all the bings and the interruptions and the dings and the pings and the everything else. My name's Marisa Murgatroyd and working in my zone of genius has helped me build a multi-million dollar a year business. But I gotta say, I got to a point with Slack and with social media where it was completely hijacking my time and hijacking my attention and pulling me right out of my genius zone, causing me to really uh, lose focus on what I was really here to do. But then I got my hands on this book, Deep Work by Cal Newport, and it changed everything for me. Once I read this book, I decided to get rid of Slack once and for all, and not just for me. I got rid of Slack from my entire company. And I gotta say, the first week or so, I felt lost without it because I had become a complete addict to all of these bings and dings stealing my attention so I wouldn't have to focus. And I gotta say, some of my team virtually revolted because they had gotten used to Slack and addicted to Slack too, not just because that little instant gratification ping and pull of your attention, but also because they got used to hitting me up, hitting everyone else up on the team anytime they needed anything and getting that instantaneous answer but I gotta say when you really want to focus on boosting that productivity you gotta get out of this instantaneous answer mode and allow yourself to go beyond into a state of deep focus now this shift allowed me to feel like I was regaining my sense of sanity my sense of wholeness my ability to focus and it was such a huge transformation for me and how I felt every day, my ability to unplug at the end of the night, not constantly looking at my phone, wondering when the next ping was gonna come in, when I could have that like little dopamine hit of getting someone pinging me about something. And once I stopped being slave to the pings and the dings, it just unlocked this deep level of creativity inside of me. And it had such a huge impact on both my sense of well-being and happiness, but also my ability to produce at an elite level that I ended up teaching a half day workshop on both deep work and also equally deep rejuvenation to my momentum business growth students. And it was so transformational and revelatory to them that I wanted to share some of what I shared with them to you here on YouTube, because if you feel like you are being torn in a million different pieces every single day, either through Slack or WhatsApp or Instagram or wherever you're getting pinged and dinged, you may want to just listen for the next five to 10 minutes and shift a couple key things that are going to give you your mental space back. Let's start with the difference between deep work and shallow work. So according to Cal Newport, author of this book, shallow work is how most people work nowadays. And it's performing kind of logistical style tasks in a state of perpetual distraction and interruption. And the thing about shallow work is it doesn't create a lot of new value into the world. And it's easy to replicate, meaning other people could do this just as well as you could. So if you are living in constant shallow work, you can be easily replaced by someone else or maybe even by artificial intelligence. But when you practice deep work, you're able to work in a state of distraction-free concentration that really pushes your cognitive capabilities to the absolute limit. And deep work efforts really create new value in the world. and it proves your skills all the time and makes you pretty much impossible to replicate, indispensable, irreplaceable. 
But in today's really go-go-go society where we're constantly being pinged and bombarded with messages and distractions, the ability to perform deep work is becoming increasingly rare and also increasingly valuable. So if you can master this one skill of deep work, you're going to thrive. Because the key to success is really the ability to quickly master not just things, but hard things and the ability to produce at an elite level. And that's not something you can do through shallow work. So deep work isn't a new practice. It's not just the antidote to modern life, but it's actually been used by some of the most influential and successful people over the course of history. So Carl Jung built a retreat so he could actually write distraction free. And Mark Twain, he wrote The Adventures of Tom Sawyer in a shed on his property. Now, Bill Gates isolated himself twice a year to do nothing but read and think big thoughts. When I started reading about deep work, I realized it's something that I've done at different points throughout my life. When I was in high school, I wrote a short story called Bangkok about a day that I spent in Bangkok exploring the city. But I wrote this short story all night long. I just got into the groove, I got into the flow, I started writing, and I couldn't stop. Plus, I had a short story due the very next day. And the interesting thing was, is I was so exhausted from staying all night writing this short story that I fell asleep in class. And at the time, I was cross-enrolled in a creative writing school, the New Orleans Center for Creative Rights, and we had two teachers for just seven students. And my professor was so upset that I was falling asleep in class that he actually locked me in a closet and told me to stay there until he could read my short story. And if it wasn't the best short story I had ever written, that he was gonna boot me out of the program because you had to audition into this program. It was a real honor to be there. So I remember just being stuck in this closet, looking at the four walls, waiting and waiting and waiting. And about half an hour later, my teacher comes back. He opens the door and he says, Marisa, this is the best goddamn short story you have ever written. And that short story came out of deep work, writing all night long when everybody else was asleep, when the lights were off, when there wasn't a peep throughout the house and I could just focus on doing my very best work, which is creating something new that has never existed before. Really going into my zone, entering the creative cave, closing the door, blocking out the world and writing. So that's my particular genius zone. And it's something that I can really only do in a state of deep work. And that's a state that I try to attain every single day from the time I wake up around 7 a.m. until about noon, all right? And then I transition, I eat lunch, and I start phone calls and meetings and trainings and do all the things that I do with the world. But from 7 a.m. till 12 p.m. every single day, I have this blissful state of deep work. So that's how I get into deep work in a daily basis. And I wanna share a few ways that you can get into deep work on a daily basis, as well as what might be threatening your deep work moving forward. So let's start with going into the four different kinds of deep work philosophies. And then we're gonna come back and talk about how to hold on to that state of deep work. So Cal Newport, author of this book, identifies four different ways that you can get into a state of deep work. So we're gonna start with the most extreme way, and then we're gonna to get to easier and easier ways to build deep work into your life. So the first philosophy, uh, Newport calls the monastic philosophy. And this is where you basically go cold turkey and you cut all different kinds of shallow activities from your life to only produce deep work, potentially going weeks, sometimes even months, not answering any kind of emails, not checking social, not doing paperwork, not being accessible to anyone. Now, obviously, this isn't something that a lot of people can do, but it works best if you are striving to attain one specific goal. 
For example, maybe you're a scientific researcher, or you're a novelist writing a book, or you're an inventor trying to crack the code on a brand new world-changing invention. Then the monastic approach could really work for you. But if you're not the kind of person who can completely unplug for weeks or months at a time, you can still make the monastic approach work for you by maybe scheduling, say, one week a month or two weeks each quarter, whatever it happens to be where you have this unplugged off the grid time to do your deepest level of work. But if that's too much, you might also want to try the second philosophy for deep work, which is the bimodal philosophy. And this is where you actually divide your time each week. So you're dedicating some really clearly defined stretch to deep work pursuits and then leaving the rest of your time open to everything else, checking email, responding to people, all the other things you might be doing. Now, this only works if you can dedicate enough time to reach maximum cognitive intensity so the real breakthroughs can happen. And Cal Newport recommends at least one full day to reach that state of maximum cognitive intensity. So this approach works if you can't completely detach for a longer period of time, but maybe you can take one or two or three or even four days a week where you uh, practice this bimodal approach to deep work, where you've got whole day long units or multi day units where you're not responding to people and you can enter that state of deep work. Now, Carl Jung actually practiced bimodal deep work because he needed to keep his clinical practice running to pay the bills. So he would be doing his practice four days a week, and then he would be doing his deep work the other three days a week. Next up, we've got my personal approach to deep work, which is the rhythmic philosophy. And it's the easiest way to start getting into this practice, this habit of deep work. And what you do with the rhythmic approach is you really schedule your deep work sessions every single day, ideally at the same time each day, and you block them out on your calendar. Like I said, my deep work sessions happen every single morning. I don't take any meetings before 1 p.m. So from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m., I can just do my deepest possible thinking and writing and creating. Now, there are a lot of creatives who use the rhythmic approach, including Jerry Seinfeld of comedy fame. So he actually creates his comedy using this philosophy where every day he works on his comedy routines, his comedy sketches, just a little bit each day, always at the same time of day. Now, finally, the fourth approach is the journalistic philosophy. And this is where you just fit deep work sessions in whenever you can. And this is named the journalistic philosophy because journalists have basically been trained to shift into writing mode at a moment's notice to really hit their deadlines. Now, this approach is not good if you're brand new to deep work because it takes a lot of practice to be able to rapidly shift your mind from shallow work to deep work. It's, and it's not supernatural for most people. However, if you're a journalist, if you're a parent, if you're someone who has constant interruptions so you can't do one of the other three approaches, this approach might be for you. Or if you're someone who's really practiced in deep work and you're able to kind of shift gears at a moment's notice, you can get in journalistic work in combination with some of these other approaches in combination with the monastic, the bimodal or the rhythmic philosophy, because you can really mix and match these philosophies. So while I primarily do rhythmic, which is getting in deep work time every single day, I've started mixing in bimodal where I have a few days at a time sometimes where I don't talk to people, where I just do the deepest possible work. So you wanna choose what works best for you based on how you like to work, also your lifestyle, your work situation, your family obligations. Just go ahead and take a moment right now to jot down which approach you think is gonna work best for you. And maybe even look ahead on your calendar and start scheduling your deep work sessions. Whether you do a few hours a day, a day a week, a week a month, or simply get in the deep work whenever you can. I promise you it's gonna make a huge difference in the work you create. But there is a challenge. It's really, really, really hard to practice deep work in today's world, in today's society. And the reason is that Silicon Valley is to blame. We're stuck in shallow work because of this addiction to our phones, to our computers, to the pings, to the dings, to the slacks, to the WhatsApps of the world. But 
If you're able to put this aside, you're able to put this down, there are two ways for you to implement a deep work practice. Number one is to increase the amount of time you actually spend on deep work. Now, some people, you have more time to devote, but some people, you don't. You have the time that you got. So the second way you can implement a deep work practice is to increase the intensity of your focus. So maybe you only have an hour a day, but you go all in for that hour a day. You don't let anything interrupt you. You just focus your attention like a laser beam for that hour a day. And when you're able to do both, meaning you can increase the intensity of your focus by putting aside all the distractions, also you're able to increase the amount of time you spend. That is exponential. And you're gonna start doing your best work ever and start to be able to perform at an elite level. And soon you'll end up training yourself to be able to easily master new things because you put aside the time and you put aside the focus. And again, you do not have to retreat to a cabin for months and months at a time to practice deep work because there are four different approaches to deep work that we just spoke about. And you can choose the best one for you, whether it's monastic, whether it's bimodal, rhythmic, or journalistic, right? You can, you can choose the best approach for you. Or you can mix and match between the different kinds of approaches. Now, deep work and working in your zone of genius is just one key to a thriving business. The other key that really matters is getting into consistent action and staying in consistent action. So when you have consistent deep work, but you're also taking consistent action, that is winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I wanna invite you to my free workshop, Unlock the Science of Consistent Action, because in this workshop, I share everything that I know about getting you out of thinking and dreaming mode and into action and doing mode. So if you want to learn scientific best practices to keep hacking your brain to overcome resistance and smash your goals, go to liveyourmessage.com forward slash unlock. That's liveyourmessage.com forward slash unlock. And I've also got some more videos for you on this channel about increasing your productivity. So you also may wanna tune into my video on improving your productivity with the 80-20 rule and how to enter the flow state and maintain focus. So those are two more videos and also go check out my workshop on unlocking the science of consistent action. It's totally free and you can sign up at liveyourmessage.com forward slash unlock and be watching it within the next five minutes. See you there.